And so when I first heard that CRKT was partnering with Hogue to manufacture some American-made crossbar pocket knives, I was definitely intrigued. Better to get to the crossbar lock party late than never. But then I had a little sticker shock because I saw the price tag of $215. But then I remembered it's 2023 and I said to myself, well, maybe it's sporting 20 CV steel or, hey, what about magnet cut? Then I saw the spec sheet. Nope, 154 CM, bro. <laughs> Are you serious? Come on. But after I calmed down and kind of collected my thoughts and said to myself, okay, well, value is not going to be the driving force of picking up one of these blades then. What about the design? Maybe the designs are just like killer and the form and function is excellent, you know, American made, always love to do that and have blades that are made in America whenever possible. Let's get our hands on them. Let's see what they can do. So I picked up the slightly larger definitive and the slightly more streamlined LCBK. But after now having gotten these in hand, there is a design characteristic that makes both of these a hard pass for me. There it is, drawn blood. But let's dive in and see what that characteristic is other form and function, what was executed well, maybe what wasn't in these two CRKT in partnership with Hogue designs, so you can determine for yourself whether or not they're right to throw in rotation. But before we continue in the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. LA Police Gear carries so many well-established brands that you and I are familiar with, but even more than that, LAPG has their own line of gear and apparel that my family and I have grown to love. And they've recently expanded their apparel line into kids and toddler sizes with cool pattern button ups as well as graphic tees and specifically their Urban Ops tactical pants. And since my boys have started wearing these, they feel just as prepared as their dad for adventure. And with plenty of sizes in both toddler and big kids, and thankfully these are built to last because they're not only made out of 55% cotton and 45% polyester ripstop fabric, they are double kneed and double seated with a total of six different pockets so they can start building out their own EDC system. And with a reliable YKK zipper and an easy to operate button snap, it has an added bonus with not only your standard exterior belt loops, but then adjustable interior bands to help tighten up the waist if necessary. And when you're a parent looking at kids clothes, you want durability, capability, and you want to come in at good value, which is exactly what these pants offer. So guys, I'll have a link in the description box below over to LA Police Gear, as well as my exclusive promo code for 10% off site-wide your purchase, which is pretty sweet. So go check them out and see what they have to offer. So let's dive in first with the positives and what I like. I can tell that there is really good attention to detail, quality control is very high, and the fit and finish is excellent. So that has been executed really well with Hogue and CRKT partnering together. I guess they're planning on doing some more partnerships is what I'm told um, through some of their press releases on these designs. So in theory, that will be a good thing to see. So very smooth actions. These run on bronze washers, which is excellent. I actually prefer bronze washers over ball bearings whenever possible. It just means less maintenance and usually less play in the lockup. And we have very minimal side to side and excellent up and down with those crossbar locks and actually almost no play on the LCBK. So excellent, smooth, smooth actions. I mean, they almost feel like ball bearings. That's really, really good in the crossbars and really pronounced portions to grab onto on either side. So you're not gonna accidentally slip off of that. I've had and tested other designs that are out there and they're almost flush with the scales, which isn't always ideal. So even with like gloves on, you would easily be able to engage and actuate the blades. Now you're gonna notice that the pivots are very reminiscent of Hogue's design. So you're gonna see some Hogue vibes throughout the designs on the thumb studs as well as those pivots. Now, even though the crossbars are super easy to you know actuate and you can basically just do that all day long and never engage with the thumb studs, uh, I'm kind of lackluster on the thumb studs. On the LCBK, they are right up against the body and they're actually almost recessed from the G10 handle scales meaning that you have to come in straight on at an angle to engage them. 
So uh, like basically you almost have to be pushing up and it, it would be very easy to miss them, particularly with gloves on. And you really got to get like the, the exact angle or it's not ideal to deploy. So it would have been nice to have those slightly higher um, or just slightly further away from the handle, but you know, then that takes away from kind of the design. On the flip side, Definitive has better, more pronounced it seems, even though they are about the same with flush, but they are just kind of further away. The, it has a broader blade, so it just makes it easier with the kind of the cut in of the handle. It just seems more natural and just easier to engage, but it's really weird. The, you know, the thumb stud is removable, but they put, or at least on my model, the screw facing out, you know, towards the presenting side of the knife, if you will, versus having this side towards the pronouncing side of the knife. And this is going to play into um, right and left-handed ambidextrous in a moment, meaning that there's this little recessed screw in there. And there's actually a little bit of a sharp lip where it's not as sharp on the opposite side. So... I mean, if you were to have this model, I'd actually unscrew it and swap it over. So I don't know why, if that was just like a screw up at the factory on my model, or if they're all kind of like that, it's just odd. and doesn't look as streamlined and clean as it should be, as well as making it a little bit sharper on your thumb than it has to if they were just reversed. And guys, I invite you to smash that like button if you're enjoying the content in this video and to subscribe if you haven't yet. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified every week when I put up new content just like this. Really breaking things down, guys. This is why I started the channel is to be able to break down gear for you, show you pros, cons, positives, negatives, so you guys can determine for yourself what gear and equipment is right for you. So thank you so much to all of you viewers and subscribers and being part of the Gideon Satical family. Moving on to the solid G10 handles. These are thick slabs of G10. So there's a lot of structural density to them. There's no liners in there. There's uh, probably stainless steel, I would assume hardware plates right around where the, all the pivots and all the, you know, the tension is going to be and all the torque and, you know, using of the tool. So that's good. But then the rest of it is just G10, which means they're very lightweight, but still going to give you a lot of strength. The uh, LCBK is 2.8 ounces and the definitive being three ounces. So they're very lightweight for being 3.7 inches long and 3.48 inches long, which is really nice to see. So there's no complaints with they're very lightweight for how large both of these blades are. Now with the definitive, you have that wider kind of handle cut in. You can see there, they have cut out the G10. So it's like flow through. You can see there, it's just a cool, you know, piece. I don't really see it having any structural issues or anything like that, particularly for a pocket knife like this. It doesn't seem to flex any, you know, worse or anything back there. These two, your two front fingers are going to fit really nice in there. You got some mild jimping right there. It's not aggressive, but it kind of locks you in. And then you got that kind of tapering on the back end. Plenty of real estate. Feels good in the hand. Fills you out well. Definitely kind of more of the if you will, tactical vibe on this one. Whereas on the LCBK, this is more of just kind of a, um, in the Osborne, like 940 and in the Gerber savvy arena. So like slim, sleek, long dagger esque profile on this one fills out the hand. Well, good grip, obviously just kind of a little bit of a slimmer profile. And what they've done is drop down the scale quite a bit and then giving you this big rise with a lanyard hole. The definitive will not have a lanyard. This has a lanyard hole if you want to do that. And so because that portion is so thick, it doesn't seem to lose any, you know, like grip or feeling or feel like a, a, there's a, a gap in the handle design. Now the pocket clips are going to be extremely deep ride with recessed screws. So that's excellent, but they're not ambidextrous. So like a crossbar lock to me at this point is just like it should any knife with that should be ambidextrous if it's not it's just a miss so i mean you're cutting out 10 percent of your customer base right away and the lock and you know the style is absolutely designed for that so kind of definitely a miss i'm sorry the 10 percent of you who might be interested in the design uh what seems to be, which is weird is that the lcbk is has a really nice rigid pocket clip a little bit of a flare there uh different screw attachment points on the definitive, but the pocket clip is a lot like more flexy. I don't know. It's almost like it was like it's different density or something like that. So um, it still has good tension on it and not too much of a flare, but I just would have liked to see the same tension that, I mean, I can easily get my whole finger under there. I cannot do that. 
on the LC. Uh, so, weird. Now to these blades. Again, you can see that the Definitive uh, is definitely like that wider, broader, love that harpoon shape. I just think I like and connect more with the Definitive design overall. Not that there's anything wrong with the LCBK. Uh, it's just more, there's a lot of other models similar to that with that kind of reverse Tanto, sheep's foot design there. They're both gonna be about an eighth of an inch thick. They both have hollow grinds. I put up my ruler next to them and I saw light coming through the concave grind that both of these have. No issue with that, nice and slicey, but just for your data, um, hollow grinds on these from well, how I test knives. Flat grinds don't have light come through them. These both did. Uh, what I noticed is that you have a really good, pretty strong tip all the way through on the LC. I'm just going to call it the LC because I don't want to say LC because it's just a big mouthful. Um, the definitive is like paper thin tip, which means it's going to pierce and slice like insane. The penetration is going to be nuts, but I'll be very careful about the lateral torque you're going to put on this knife. Now the 154 CM steel is Rockwell 60 to 61. So that's excellent. Hogue has used that steel for a long time. They know what they're doing. It's not a bad steel by any means. You're going to get good rust resistance, ease of resharpening and kind of middle of the road edge retention for a stainless steel in the pocket knife arena. But when you jump into the American-made crossbar arena, I mean, the Benchmade Griptilian left that steel behind years ago and is now rocking S30V steel, which will definitely have a better overall performance and edge retention. This guy's going for like $145. When I can get an American-made Gerber Savvy with 20 CV steel and it's ambidextrous for $200, 15 less than this blade, it's hard to see the value. And I'm reminded of the Schrade Radoc with S35VN, American-made crossbar locking mechanism, same blade length that's on the Definitive, and carbon fiber handle scales for 210 bucks. And I get that CRKT's got to split the profits with Hogue and with the Lurch family, husband and wife team that designed these. It's just tough for the knife lover in this economy to throw down that much money after the design with these materials. But now to that hard pass design characteristic. I'm gonna try to do this all on frame for us here. Do you guys see the tip of that knife? It's about flush with the handle when it's closed. And I'm gonna try not to draw blood. Now, if I can pull it out with my fingernail, that's something I don't like. I am in, ow, oh, frick. I'm gonna try not to do this with pulling blood. My flesh, this is not my fingernail, is doing that. That is, that's not okay. That's, to me, that is not okay. It does not recess itself. And there's plenty of tolerance we can see in here. If this was just buried in like two millimeters, good to go. And of these two models, since I bought them, I would keep this model and, you know, just pawn off, sell, whatever, get rid of the LCBK. But with this characteristic on this model, that's a hard no for me. That's a hard pass. <sighs> it's, it, yeah, drew blood. There it is. Drew blood with it just sitting there. And that's the way it is. I'm not doing anything. That is my model, how it lands every single time. If it's buried, if it's not flush, it's like not even a millimeter below. And that's just a hard, hard stop for me on the definitive. And on the LCBK, it's not quite as bad, but yep, look at that. Drawn blood. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut myself both times for you guys probably here. Yep. Ah, did it again. I pulled that out with my flesh on my pinky. Nope. The, and this this one, the handle should have just had some more more material, or again the blade go in a millimeter, and we're all good. And just for perspective, every other competitive option I've rolled in here, the Schrade, buried so deep in there, I'm never even gonna get to that. Hogue, nicely buried. Benchmade, way deep inside that handle. And the Gerber Savvy, deep, deep inside that handle. So 
that is that to, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why that was the case, but m from my perspective, my, what I look for in knives and what is a hard no is if it's cutting me on my flesh, uh, w when it's inside the handle and I can pull it out with my pinky, that is not enough tolerances for me to feel comfortable carrying the blade. That's me, that's my mileage, that's what I experience. But guys, I wanna hear from you. What has been your experience? If you own one of these two models, are you seeing similar issues? Or maybe I got flukes. I wanna know in the comment section below your experience, likes, dislikes, and I always appreciate you guys coming over, spending your valuable time with me today. I do invite you to again, subscribe and check out the other video uh, popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.